Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number one of uh, Vault Sky Industries between Creepy Crawly Spiders and Phoenix Rising Amethyst. I am Raka. I will be your hostess tonight. I am doing a like weird and uncomfortable uh, hotel cast, so I'm like leaning forward and almost whispering into the mic. Like, okay, not really whispering, but I, c I can't be quite as like jubilant as I normally am. So um, I'm just not going to be. I can't have like my 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 hotel neighbors be mad at me because I'm just like. So we did go ahead and have Varian being banned out by creepy crawly spiders. They did lose the coin toss, but um, Phoenix Rising Amethyst chose map pick rather than first pick. So that does mean that False Guy is the there's a specific plan for the Amethystians. The Stormwind duo are going to be removed. Varian and his son, both not in the game. Malfurion going to be, to be taken out as well. It, what, it, what, it's just like all of the Alliance leaders being removed. What's next, Muradin? <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it, it, the, the, the trend had to end eventually. That is a human leader, but that's a bit of a stretch, you know? So here we go with the real pick, the real action. Here's, I, I, I always, I'm always not really sure how I can um, talk intelligently about, you know, like the bands. Like, okay, well that's banned, but yeah. Okay, so Bright, Bright being very, very good. I'm oh, going to be able to play that mobile game. Going to be able to like help with side so trying to keep them in the experience and just also really, really not quite as good as Stukov, but with Stukov being banned out, probably is one of the best pick healers. Be able to polymorph someone, lower their armor, and basically silence them for a bit. Really, really, really potent. Victory. My blades are yours. So we have Sonya in the incorrect skin coming out from Docket. Uh, Sylvester Shung is going to be on the Sylvanas. Sylvanas very, very, very good. Hopefully we'll never see Sylvanas inside a protector. Sylvanas will shut down all of the... Um... Oh god damn it, Anna. Um, Sylvanas no, basically turns off the defenses and makes the protector just that much stronger. It's basically being like, hey yo, we're just bringing the, I, the frozen Punisher from Infernal along with you, protector. We do go ahead and have Gib on the stitches and then Chromie is coming out as well. So Sand Dragon and, uh, and Scary Zombie. Now they make me wonder, I wonder if Stukov was into yoga back before he got infested. Is that why he can do that? Is he basically Dalsim? So it begins. Deckard is going to be picked up by a little barista. For the next and then, okay, I gotta say, I love, I love, I love the name Dancing Bacon. Dancing Bacon is amazing. The work does come out with Jacques and who is our last one? Who is Harkin going to pick up? What Canadian hero is Harkin going to be rocking this time? They already have a mage, so probably some sort of auto attacker. No? We actually have Zeratul come out instead? That is very spicy. Orphia going to be very uncomfortable with the fact that there's... Because like Zeratul is super, super mobile, able to teleport a lot. And if Orphia misses her Q, she's kind of a sitting duck. Like, her escape depends on her being able to hit a Q against a hypermobile hero. Calls. We do have Space Pope. Now, Johanna not the best at stopping the Zeratul from getting by, but if Zeratul has to use his teleport to get past Johanna, that will mean that Dancing Bacon has a bit of an easier time trying to get a Q on top of Zeratul. Thank you, thank you, good, thank you, Iwa. I appreciate you. Thank you, all of Raiders. As you know, I am um, Raka. I'm doing a scary, weird hotel cast. But we're going to go ahead and get into the game. I'll get predictions up. Feel free to put your money where your mouth is. And if your mouth isn't anywhere, then put money somewhere regardless. So here comes the um, predictions. Operations. 
All right, there we go. This is, all, this is always awkward because I, like, I'm on one computer. I'm not used to that. I'm used to having two separate computers. So you know, to tab in and out and be like, am I in the program or I'm not in the program? What's going on? But regardless, here we go. Uh, coming out of the blue gate on the blue side of the battlefield, we do have Jack of All. He's going to be playing the Leoric. We do go on and have um, Auxilian on the bright wing. Gib is playing the Stitches. Harkin is going to be playing the Zeratul. And Savior is coming out here on the Chromie. They are your blue team. They are the Centurions of Calamity. They are creepy crawly spiders. Meanwhile, on the orange side of the battlefield, we do go ahead and have Sylvester Shung. Going to be on Sylvanas. Dancing Bacon is going to be on Orphea. We do go ahead and get um, Deckard. Old man Deckard Kane will be being played by a little barista. Space Pope will be coming out on Johanna. And Docket will be on, so on Mrs. Oh! Herself. They are your orange team. They are the... Um, Renegade Rebellion. They are Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Now the bottom lane, we do go ahead and have Sonya going into Leo, but the real action is up top. As Stitches goes ahead and gets away, since that's a lot of people, that's a lot of arrows pointed directly at my gizzard. I say no. We do have Stitches going for Hungry for more. Um, moves a little bit faster and does get more health from those. Deep breathing is taken by Chromie, but she hasn't actually landed anything yet. And then Zeratul does go Shadow Hunter. Already almost a third of the way done. Absolutely no questing talents taken on the side of um, Phoenix Rising, which means they might have a bit of a power spike now. Because that's the thing, generally speaking, the questing talents are always a little bit better than the other talents that, you know, are available, but you, they have prerequisites before they show up. So when you get a bunch of non-questing talents, it means you have a power spike right then, while your opponents are still trying to finish their quests. Well, good job, Leo! Jack of all, I'm sorry for missing it. Is the curse being the offlaner? No one ever watches you, even other offlaner casters? My space move finishes that up. We're going to have um, Sonya coming back down here. Try to get Sylvester Chung out of the area. That is, don't whirlwind there, Docket! Look at your fury. Look how low it is. Because you, you whirlwinded on one enemy minion. Sorry, I usually don't like do stuff like that. I don't usually like basically do coaching in the middle of a cast. But I'm a, so a Sonya main and I just... That, 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 that hurt my soul. Our vision picks that up, but we do go ahead and have Phoenix Rising does go ahead and get the uh, heal kit. Now I'm pretty sure they knew they were doing that; they just didn't care because they did have a like time trap in in there. Now Stitches, Stitches hook looks so short before 13. I'm just used to like thinking about it as in the post 13 world. Okay, big, there's the plywood coming in. Doc is getting a lot of damage. He's going to have to spin to win and will take out Leoric. Gets blessed, blessed, blessed revenge. Doc is still going in there. Doc is exactly playing the way Sonya should. With absolute, complete disregard to their health. And it's going to kill me. I can already see her. She'd be like, Rocket, no. Right there is the polymorph coming out on Dancing Bacon. So goes in a lot of damage. We do have Gip going ahead and getting out. So the Stitches goes back to the graveyard. Jack of all going to be the next one targeted. Just going to have to walk on out of there. This is the first person that does go to the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. I 
I say that and then it does not come true? The fact they lost stitches, I did not think there was any way they could drive them off that point. But you know what? Seeing is believing and I do have eyeballs. Here's Kate coming. Oh, nice. Uh, pull on the little Obviously, does not have a heroic yet, so can I go ahead and eat her? And oh my goodness, Jackal. I don't know what keeps happening to Jackal, but he, he has health and he doesn't have health anymore. Did someone take his, like, gift to heal at all from that? Decker, 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 Decker. Okay, there we go. I'm like, that's what's happening. That's why the healing is just not existent. It's because Decker keeps cubing. Decker has been studying cubism. Great those zeros like I'm a sneaky ninja. I'm going to get you. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to Oh god, it's a robot! Oh, Barista took a bunch of damage. We do go and have some deep breathing stacks coming down. Actually, it looks like Chromie already finished that while well, I wasn't paying attention. Chromie, by the way, has used her time walker uh, trickery in order to already get her level 10. I've not seen it be used yet. I thought that was Temporal Loop. So Temporal Loop will be very, very good against Orphea. Um, Sylvanas, not so much. Deckard, Sonya kind of, because Sonya so does go leap, so it's going to be less useful than Sonya. But Deckard and Orphea don't have good escapes from it. Speaking of not having escape, we have Unstoppable, but you know what? Unstoppable does not mean unkillable, as um, Johanna has definitely learned just now. Da -da. Da -da. No, this is just going for a camp. Can't do like the Jaws music. Can't like build this up too much. Do have Gip going around? Say you're going ahead and getting not saved. I see that he's being attacked. No one's even near him. Marisa, Chunk, and Space Pope. Now that was seen by Gib as he moved by. Pope goes in and gets pulled out of position, but the rest of the team is not super nearby to fight this, although they could be. Seratul could jump up in just a second. Seratul, come on! Come on, Zara! Pretty sure that was Harkin um, betraying his allies. Can't trust a Canadian. We'll get our level 10 talents. We have had them picked up. We do go ahead and have Gorge, Temporal Loop, Blink Heal, Entomb, and Might of the Nerezine. We do also get the Leap, Stack Wild Edition, Blessed Shield, Crushing Jaws, and Mind Control. I really like Mind Control. It's like, it, it is my favorite ult of Sylvanas. Some people swear by Wailing Arrow and some people are wrong. They're going to have the first fort going to the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. They want to pick up this mercenary camp right quick. They want to get themselves a very own toy to play with. This isn't really a mercenary camp. This is like a, um... This is a looting. Like, they're just going to come in, beat... This is a mugging, basically. They came in, they beat up this technician. They, like, stole his, uh, turret. Oh, wow. Very, very good layering of CC right there. It's usually really hard to gank a uh, Leo. They did have to commit two ults to getting Leo down. But you know what? They make it a second one here. Gib coming in. There's the mind control, but there's the nom 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 and that's Zillia. No, the, 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 the fairy dragon does survive. Let some survive. Red team has destroyed the fort. 
So we do have Zara up at the top. We end taking the top point. We are just about to get stitches back. Looks like we will go ahead and have um, CCS, who then takes out their own fort. So the top and the bottom are uh, forts are missing on the side of CCS. The middle fort is missing on the side of uh, Phoenix Rising. Mind Control does land onto Proby, and oh my gosh, Savior's health bar just evaporates. Get Johanna away from that! Poor Proby is dropping like, oh my god! Yeah, okay, that's not really what Proby sounds like, but you know what, you get the idea. We do go in and get uh, Phoenix Rising, does go in and uh, secure the Protector, although they have lost their Jojo. Jojo went on a bizarre adventure and hasn't quite come back yet. There goes the last of CCS's forts. Looking at the talents, uh, this little rogue is going for the initial mace build at level 13. Just picked up a 16 and yep, does go ahead and go for the stacking one. Attack 20% faster, 50% once you're done. But we do go ahead and have the uh, shield coming out. A lot of damage give is a momentary stop. There is a blind coming out. Big, big, big damage, but not enough. It's not enough. Kind of surprised they committed the shield while they're still in the protector, because the protector is not very good at team fighting. You push the protector to its limit. Well done. All right, the yo camp is leashed at the moment. Hello, Melville. How you doing? Hello, Melville. How you doing? We do go ahead have quite, quite a bit of damage coming through. Um, both sides are going for their toys once again. I say toys, but really, they're just they're just mugging a toy maker. We really like that for the army. Okay, well that will be thirty-seven dollars, and then they just start punching him. Pizza? Why would you do this? Why have you done this? Oh, they do go and catch a max range hitting, but they don't actually get anything onto Harkin. And there is a nice and two, three people stuck inside it, but they don't have the um, Void Prison. They do go and kill Sonya. It is one for nothing. However, uh, Harkin has had to completely disengage for the time being. They do also force out the Healing Beacon. So I think CCS will be able to pick this up, although they may just be evacuating the area. You go ahead and have the uh, Cooper Cross Spires going ahead and moving through the side of the map. Point C will be coming out in just a second. We do go ahead and have the Paper Airplane Camp being removed by the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. And here we go, a little bit of a uh, battle brewing. Space Pope is wasn't... They don't have Leoric, this may be a bad idea to go into. Although where is the fifth for Phoenix Rising? 
I only see four on the screen. Oh, Sony was dead? Surprised they moved in there, although I guess they could see the orc in the bottom lane. An access terminal will be online in a moment. Alright, there's that going through. Gib goes ahead and launches out a massive, massive, massive hook. He has he has achieved the difficult achieve get to level 13 quest. Well done, well done, proud of you. to the terminal. Control it and you can pilot the protector. Well, right now they do go in a park it up top, trying to push into this. Yeah, they're just trying to harass right now. They're not trying to move in because Zeratul is not going to be back at down. Zeratul is just very much like, I'm going to go ahead and take this. Go ahead and grab that. We do go ahead and have the turret, double turret coming down. Double turret is like double dragon, but you know, with uh, guns. That's why I needed, I needed freaking Billy to just like pull out a howitzer. Okay, that's just a whole bunch of pain. Like, this is one of those cases where, as a caster, I should be talking about what's happening. But what is happening is just absolute slaughter and destruction. My eyes could not follow that. I just kept, like, seeing, uh, everywhere I looked, I almost felt like I was the destroyer of the worlds. Because every time I looked at someone, they died. And basically, I was just like, I have superpowers. Which, to be honest, I, I need to have superpowers. Superpowers would be 100% uh, what I need, what I deserve to have in my life. But it's just like the death march coming through. Very, very often it is the third protector that leads the end of the game. And we are still about 20 seconds away from CCS coming back into this. Will they be able to end? Right now, Harkin and Jakubo are trying to fight, but they're having a bit of a problem with it because there is only two of them. The work has to fall back, and the keep goes down. The keep goes down. It does look like Phoenix Rising has said no. We don't want to end right now. We'll go ahead and settle for a uh, bunch of damage. Gib goes ahead and feasts upon Sonya. Goes num 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 num. Barista in a bit of problems. We do have Hucket on top of that. On top of that old man. Jekovo will go ahead and finish with Harkin and start. And there is the Buried Alive. Silence comes down. You're not going anywhere, my friend. I wish you would try to stop running away, my friend. Big ol' hook comes out. Face Pope in the middle of a lot of pain. The pain train has no brakes. So with that, CCS finds themselves in a very dominant position, with only Sylvanas left alive. What will they do with this newfound aggression? The person which is on the map? We do go ahead and have Harkin leading the way. Remember, Zeratul has shown that they are very, very, very good at this offlane push potential. They are going in. There are. Now, the Orc is not with them. So it is at best a four versus three. And Orpheus coming back. We almost have everyone. Just like CCS is going to go ahead and come up here say, you know what, the skill camp is great. The skill camp goes ahead and makes our bodies better. Even Stitches enjoys having a heal camp and, like, positive energy hurts him. So it's just, it's just basically uh, improved versions of magic. Oh, great! 
bait. Oh, great, great bait coming from Sonya. Uh, coming from Zeratul. A lot of people were cutting that in tune, but there just wasn't enough damage behind it. Yeah, Chromie ended up going around for the flank. This could be this could be this could be cuttins. Cuttins for you, CCS. Uh, we do go ahead and have Jackable tries to get out, but Jackable will not be going anywhere. That is a three for nothing in favor of PRA. And PRA are marching forward. Aurelium No. Auxilio tries to go ahead and get out of here. But the stun, um, not quite being able to eat dancing bacon. And to be honest, if your stitches like all you really want to do is eat bacon, it's your goal in life. Paint is scratched, the shields are down. We do have a kill onto Brightwing. It is only stitches now. Base point very, very low is being targeted by the core. I don't see Ariat Crater a whole bunch, but I also don't see this core living much longer. Reese is like, guys, you're supposed to dodge those. Hello? All right, we are down to 7%, down to 2%. And with that, we do go ahead and have Phoenix Rising Amethyst win game number one. Can they keep it up? Can they do this for one more game? Or will CCS come back with a vengeance in a second? So, looking at these stats, we do go ahead and have, in terms of damage, Dancing Bacon, doing the Bacon Dance of Death, uh, does go ahead and do 96,000 damage over the course of the match. Oh my god! We do have Chromie coming in with 66,000 and the Orc with 57. Maybe you need to keep Orphea away from that. Uh, away from that. Humana, humana, hum, hum. Wow. We do go ahead and have Auxilium comes out with 83,000 in terms of healing. Uh, Decker coming out with 63. In terms of that ever important side soap, Jackavolt putting on a clinic, doing 22,000 to Sonya's 18. Talents, we got some of those. Go ahead and copy them down. Take them into your Storm League matches. Win with them with great vengeance and glorious anger. I'm an offlaner, so we do go ahead and have Consumed Vitality, coupled with Paralyzing Rage. Um, Definitely the picks if you want to be the most combat effective, but this does mean that you're going to have a hard time healing because it's hard to hit a lot of people with the consumed vitality if you don't take the extended range. So, you're really saying I want to be slowing them more often, so I'm more looking at the um, cooldown reduction than I am looking for the healing out of this. They're going to get Willing Vessel, so that goes in and gives them a bit more healing. Obviously, we had Entomb and Barrier Alive, and then the Mace build. I love it. We get Sonya. We do have the slam build. Thank you, ma'am. Life Funnel and Ruthless. Really, really empowering the whirlwind, which goes directly into the area crater. This person's a giant hand slammer. I forget, does she have a whirlwind talent 16? Because she wasn't spending a huge amount of time slamming. Although I guess giant slammer was very, very good against the enemy um, Sonya and Johanna. So it makes sense. Regardless, I will see you guys in just a second for game number two.
Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two on Infernal Shrines, the map that almost no one ever picks. I'm so excited to cast this map. This map never comes up in any series ever. Definitely have not have not played it, like, earlier tonight and also yesterday and also every cast in the history of the world. <laughs> we do go in and have a first pick going to the side of Creepy Curly Spiders. That obviously means they chose first pick after losing match number one, which means that once again, map pick does go to the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Gotcha. Amethyst is one of the- I, I knew a girl in high school named Amethyst, and Amethyst is definitely one of those names slash one of those types of people that is either one of the sweetest people in the world or is just absolutely terrible. Like, the name is so pretty and the people, the Amethysts I have known, are so t awful. It's a weird correlation. So we do go on a Varian Stukov. Very, very similar. Still Bonnets. Anduin. We just want to have, like, a faction leader thing. Actually, I guess Stukov doesn't count. Never mind. Oh, okay. Actually, I a thousand percent agree with this one. That Orphea was doing heckin' work in game one. So, wait, wait, was that Orphea on Amethyst's side? I almost feel like Orphea, or I almost feel like Amethyst was like, you know what, you know what, you know what? You needed to ban out Orphea from Dancing Bacon. We were expecting you to. Our plans revolve around you not having access to Orphea. So you know what? We'll take it out. This is, pay attention. This is what you should have done. You need to learn from this. The lad Anduin is going to go and picked up by little barista. Dancing Bacon going to be going from Orphea to Tassaface. Hogger is taken by Jacoba. Very, very early Hogger, but granted this is his best map by far. The God Bounce is just so oppressive here. Gibbers does go and pick up the Jojo. And then the Lucio. Bit interesting. I wonder what I'm going to pair with that. Because Lucio, you usually take either because of high five, you're worried about wombos, or because you want movement in order to like get a garage into position. Definitely not going to be a garage. I wonder who the like plan with Lucio is. I very much doubt Johanna is the plan. Carrion goes ahead and gets removinated. We do go and have the Dubrock taken on that. Very, very regular strategy to go and take Tychus and Diablo together. A photo to wonder. The thing about Tychus is that, yeah, you took Tychus, which means they can't use Tychus into your Diablo. But, 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 but. It also means that you're going Tychus into a Johanna with double blind, which is problematic. They do come back with Vala and Greymane. Um, Greymane will make short work back Diablo. We are going to see Hogger versus Gaslow in the offlane. I hate fighting Hogger with Ga with the, uh, Gaslow, let me just say that now. So, Docket, I'm waiting to be impressed. With that being said, we do go ahead and have the game coming up. I'll get predictions up. I'll get into the game. Don't go anywhere. Okay, uh, Prisa, what the heck? How dare? If you're gonna do that, at least do it on a screen where you actually get thanked, but I'll go ahead and thank you. Um, 
I, I love how I, I love how polite I am. I'll go ahead and thank you, I guess. Frizzo, you're amazing. I really appreciate the support. I really appreciate the you being awesome. I really appreciate all the like oh my goodness. Lots of faith into PRA. Wow. So coming into game number two, we do have creepy crawly spiders. Um we do have Auxilium is going to be on the Lucio. Cordona is going to be playing the Grey Bane. We do going to have Gib riding around on Johanna. Harkin is going to be on the Valala. And then Jacobal is going to be AFK on the Hogger. In the Orange Trunks on the other side of the battlefield, we do go ahead and have Space Pope on the um, Diablo. Docket going to be on Gaslo the Gaslord. Sylvester Shung is going to be playing the Tychus. Little Barista on Anduin the Lad. And then some Bacon on Tassaface. Lots of damage coming out. Would you go and have a ton of stuff? And Gib goes ahead and just gets smackinated. Um, Colossal Chun does have to go and dash out of there. Lots of damage coming down onto his face. Space Pope is starting to move down below. They're not trying to interfere. And Space Pope, you do not have a lot of. Space Pope! So there is Creeping on Spiders going ahead and envenoming their opponents right out of the gate. They're going to go and take the bottom one because the Tigus is not around for their opponents to contest. Although surprisingly and dangerously, two of them went up mid. They could invade into this if they really want to, but they do see Pace, Space Pope and Barista up here. Man, heart, my my hands would, grow, would fall off if I had to like stutter step that much. I hate to stutter step on heroes like Artanis. But for the most part, it's not required, and I'm very grateful for that. Oh, Gib, 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 Gib! just casually donates had like 50% of his health. It's fine, it's fine. Don't worry about it. What's going on up here? Daka is definitely not winning this engagement, and I'm not surprised. Like I said, it's a rough engagement for Gaslo. Space Pope right in the middle, Cordona goes ahead and backs off. Were they trying to push? They seem to be very, very, very far engaged. And there goes ahead and goes Vala. Vala goes and gets picked off. Does Vala have... Vala did take Creed of the Hunter. That means she has just lost 5% of her attack speed for the rest of the game. Creed of the Hunter is dangerous. Oh, I completely missed that gank. Whenever you don't have a double support comp. You've only got Lucio, and Lucio can't even protect you that well until 10. Yeah. Alright, would you go and have things towards the end of this? Let me towards the bottom of the map right now. Um, a hucket. Our Harking is going in as well as Cordona. We do have the first shrine. This will be a frozen punisher coming out of this thing. A god bounce achieved, it looks like. It looks very good. My name's Hollander. I'm helping as I go and make a sandwich. I don't know. How does it care about your walls? I hogger came out just in time to go ahead and kill Gaslow. Gaslow was so used to hogger, but but we also have a kill onto Lucio. However, the frozen punisher is out. The they may not have healing, but they do have you don't need healing when the enemy can't shoot at you. Little sun comes out. If you go in and have a uh, Johanna moves back. Yeah. 
Well, by Johanna. Nice knowing you, my friend. Here's the thing. I, I feel like they're trying a little bit too hard in order to be, like, clever and predict where they can attack from. They're not considering just how fragile or how much damage their opponents do in a short period of time. So when you're somewhere you your opponents kind of expect you to be, they're just like, okay, gonna go ahead and snap that neck. Johanna is back alive, though. This is a full form uh, assault comes down. We have a kill on Taika. Space Pope is a little bit zoned out. Body blocks for days. Can't go anywhere. Ball going ahead and going like, I'm going to get these stacks. I'm going to get this bread as well. No, Cordona goes in and says the bread is mine. Just like the boy. Gibbs riding around. Oh, we do go in there. I was going to say, as soon as I saw that come up, I'm like, there's a gig happening somewhere. Could not quite respond in time. So that is... We still have a one kill advantage on the side of CCS. And both teams are pushing opposite sides of the map. Both teams should definitely get this. Odin is committed for the siege. Sylvester so Chung goes ahead and leaves this in. Massive, massive, massive bits of damage. But goodbye, bottom fort. And goodbye top four. Alright, here we go, moving into top lane. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out, make sure that there's not just infinite little dogs running at them. Their opponents did not get the other shaman camp, so they can't go directly to the other one. You don't need to kill the dogs, you just need to kill the shaman. Spacebook goes in and takes a bit of damage off top. Um, we're really looking for that. Nice avoidance, but weirdly enough, they actually had Doc with the uh, Cursed Bullet, even though they were aiming for Diablo. It's not rare that you miss your intended target with that and still hit someone. Nice double kill picked up for CCS. Well, this is gutsy. They're gonna go ahead and take now here's the thing. Because they have to take it out the top one, this is gonna have very, very limited effect, unfortunately. Can't punish when we push him mid. And even as it is, I think this gets cleared by the waves. Even without Docket having to come up here. I, just because, like, the, they've got no wave to support them. So even though they can summon infinite guys, they would just get a, like, bunch of people here. But let's think of where the battle actually is. Big ol' big ol' push through. The middle fort is down. Big stunners out there, Diablo. Gravel Bomb comes out, goes in and catches people. I'm uh, not gonna be able to move for a while. Jack of all goes in and gets caught on that. Very, very, very low hogger. Just go ahead and stop the one out. Also low on the space poke.
All right, we go ahead and have this moving up. A little stabby stabs into all of, uh, all of the targets. Will be cleaned up and not really get a whole lot of value, but they are getting the experience for picking these up, and that does put a two-level lead. Okay, now a one-level lead on the side of CCS. Hogger is going north. They need to be careful because now that Hogger is seen up here, the, their opponents will know they can push in if they can actually figure out where CCS is. They've been hiding for a bit. Next shrine will be in the far north. It will be a Mortar Punisher. It almost looked like the Cursed Bullet hit Lucio with how fast his health went down. Uh, obviously it didn't. Lucio will be back up within 20 seconds. This top shrine has not been announced yet. With Johanna wandering off. Oh, we got a little bit of lag going on right now. I apologize. Hogger, I'm not actually trying to help right now. Hogger's going in and grabbing this right quick. Being like, that's fine. It's just a fort. Light protects you. Spaceboat goes ahead. Lot, lot, lot. But we do have a. Um, Lucio goes ahead and boops him back in. There is a gravel bomb, and Doc is going to be pulled out of danger by Anduin. However, there comes Aurelia. I keep doing this, not Aurelia, but it's um, Auxilium. So Diablo can come back right away, the other two cannot, so there's going to be a little bit of time. However, it looks like they will be respawning right as the shrine starts. We are moving up to the top of the map. They are defending right here. But all five members of CCS are about to post up and move in. They do not yet have Anduin. And Gazlo just respawned. CCS also is up two levels. That is 8% health and 8% damage. It's not quite as godly up here. This is probably Seraph Bounce, if I'm going to be honest. Because there's a lot of places where they can, uh, where the skeletal minions can go where Hogger won't hit them ever. All ten of them have a spot up there. Hogger actually has to stop the god bounce. Up to 27 so far. Alright, Diablo goes down. There's a light bomb, but you know what? Light bomb may not make a difference. Freaking, freaking Vala going to town? Oh, come on. She almost got a pentakill. Greymane is a big old fun ruiner. But with that being taken care of, would you go ahead and have the Punisher starting to push down top lane? There's a, there's a decent bit of time. I, they can't end here, but they can definitely take a lot of the map. And they want bot lane. They are ignoring the mercenary camp. Um, though it may get cleaned up just by the fact that there's no more waves coming to support it. It just depends if anything, if he's actually targeted. Okay, yeah, it'll go down now.
Yeah, I gotta say, like, CCS figured out the way that, um, Phoenix Rising was attacking them and came up with a counter strategy, and my god, is it working? So I said they couldn't end last time, I'm not gonna say that this time. I think CCS might be able to go ahead and do amazing. GG is called by Dancing Bacon, GG called by Spaceboat, GG called by a little barista. Is he making the most excited about it? Like, that was awesome. Everyone else is like, Arr. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't put words in their mouth. But that does mean that we will be going on to a game number three. Man, we up two casts tonight and both of them went three games. To go in at in terms of our damage, we do go in at Dancing Bacon coming with 46,000, Cordona coming with 43,000, and then Harkin coming with 33. Healing wise, we do have Auxilium coming in with 53,000 healing. And then the ever important side soak, Tassar does outdo the Hogger, but only by like 300, 400. Math is hard, don't you know? Talents, we got those. Here they are. Copy them down, take them into your games, and I will see you guys in game number three.
Dragon Child. I completely forgot to like uh take it off the screen where you can see everything. Whoopsie. If I didn't say anything inappropriate. <laughs> Sorry about that. I also forgot to update the scores. Yeah, I'm a little tired, guys. Probably should have picked up an 11 o'clock cast, but I really want to see this game. So I was like, I'm going to be up either way, so I guess I'll cast it. Uh, we do go on and have Johanna being banned out first and foremost by Phoenix Rising Amethyst. There's the variant. All right, who are we gonna have? We've had a bit of a tank show so far. Will it continue, or will we have like the Anduin is banned out? Now, here's the thing: that means they are not banning out uh, Orphea. They take out the tanks and they take out the um, healers, but Orphea is actually still available. Hunt them down. This is so similar to the first set I matched. I swear to gosh, if they go up against Yorel, I'm just gonna like, just be like, just go back and watch the first cast. It's basically the same thing. My blades for the Nexus. All right, so we do gonna have Sonya coming out. I'm not going to be Yorel. The Sonya to Hogger matchup is interesting. It's hard to really get on top of him, but you do. Like, he has to use his, uh, E to clear. So you can catch him when he has on cooldown. Victory for the Forsaken. For the Frozen Throne! Nubra getting through for the first time tonight will be picked up on the side of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. Let's find out why everyone was so afraid of it. Tassar is removed, so at this point, Dancing Bacon cannot play Orphea and cannot play Tassadar. Who else does he have in his pocket? Continuing the chink, chink choke is Phoenix Rising Amethyst. They've also gone for healers, but they don't have a healer themselves. They say, we'd rather not. We'll have Lucio coming out once again. And this time, Harky is going to go ahead and get onto the Kerrigan. Kerrigan was banned out in game number one, but she's made an appearance here. Malfurion plus Chromie is dangerous. Holding them in a place while Chromie can just drop sand on them is one of the worst fates. Stitches want to play. And we are going back to Stitches for Gib. We'll have to see if this pays out. I'll go ahead and put another prediction up. Maybe, possibly, Urban Punk can make even more points and be able to just buy out the um, <laughs> point redemption store. Regardless, I'll go ahead and get into the game, get the prediction up, and get ready for some amazing play that's coming to you right about now. Here we go into game number one, representing Creepy Crawly Spiders, winners of game number two, trying to go ahead and end this uh, series in a, in a reverse sweep. We have Auxilium is playing the Lucio. 
Alright, I'm going to move away. Harkin is going to be on the Kerrigan, Unbridled Energy Kerrigan. We do go and have Jacobal is playing the Hogger. Um, Cordona is going to be on the Orphea, and then Gib will be playing Stitches. Meanwhile, on the orange side of the battlefield, representing Four, Phoenix Rising three, Amethyst. Two, we do get Little Barista one, is playing Malfurion. Dancing Bacon will be on Chromie. Space Pope will be playing the Anubarak. Docket will be on the Hogger, and then Sylvester Shum is going to be on... is that... Yeah, okay. This, I didn't run that skin for a second. That's Sylvanas. Big, big, big engagement here at the beginning. Let me zoom out a little bit. It actually is happening too fast to be that close. I can't see it. We're doing to be a bit careful. Oh my goodness, she actually stopped with an auto attack? I was, I was, I was, uh, I don't know why I say, it, it, it's the hero, I always do that. But we actually have Sonya take down Hogger up top, what the heck, Sonya, how did you, how, stop killing people when I'm not in your area, how dare? But with that being taken care of, we do go ahead and have parking, um, leading the way, getting a lot of stuff down. In terms of talents, we have, um, Hungry for War once again out of that stitches. How much talents is that for Orthia? Growing Nightmare, okay. I saw 0 out of 1, I was very confused. Capture the shrines, inherit the Dragon Knight's power, and lay waste to this forsaken kingdom. Now the thing is, that may be relatively easy to do with Kerrigan pulling everyone into one area. Docket, Docket is playing with fire, so just like Jack of All ha does have to take a good bit of damage and we'll have to move back. Good gravy. Good grease trap. My name is on Space Pope. Yeah, Auxilium on the Lucy is doing so well at putting me on. We, in the first series, we kept on betting um, Junkrat, and it was because of how good he is at displacement. Lucio was not bad at displacement. Oh, I'm super. Okay. He's actually going to go ahead and tap and then try and go back into it. Surprising. There's no urgent need for him to get back in the fight. Just in time to watch Kobe die. Cordona, this is twice? I am so impressed and afraid for uh, this Cordona, this Orphea, this Orphea. Very, very good couple of hits. Malfurion also pretty low whenever he comes down the Dragonite. If he's not in a safe place, he could very easily pay the ultimate price. That is going through under the command of Phoenix Rising Amethyst. 
Go try and leave it in this. Oh, nice, nice pull into the special chunk. Just have to go ahead and warp back out. Neither team is level 10 yet, so no gores just yet. Go ahead and have this being uh, removed. Space Mode trying to go ahead and hold this back. We will go ahead and have the Battle of the Siege Camps. Neither team going down to the bottom just yet. Between the Valkyrian, um, like, wounding people and the Space Pope, like, stunning them. Oh, barely, barely doesn't catch. The space will be in a lot of trouble trying to go in and get out of here. It looks like we will go ahead and successfully escape. Man, both of these teams are just so committed to this. Oh, Malfurion went ahead and got um, eaten. I do think this is the end for the bird break. Goodbye, little Brisa. Something up here. Pitch battle happening right now. Oh, Jack of all! I respect the aggression in a big way. Become the Dragon Knight and claim vengeance for my family. Space boots just a little bit late. And now I think you might be in for it. Yep, we do want to have a kill into Anubarak. Anubarak, 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 Anubarak. I've not gotten a lot of value this game. Unfortunately, I do really like my control, but I haven't seen it like do all that much, and that's much I respect it too. So, with that being taken care of, we have um, Kerrigan in the middle of the map, ready to become a dragon just as soon as Sonya finishes capturing this up top. But there's a fight breaking out down below. Kills for Dragonite? Is it worth it? That is the question. That is the question. Everything. Did you go and have the longer fishing hook coming out of Gib? is basically um, dead at this point. Didn't really get all that much, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that's an odd like target to go for. You gotta know that a new rock can get away. He's got to get away.
Right, here we go. Sorry for the somewhat like lack of uh, casting. I mean, like I, I know I'm going silent for a long time. I'm really tired. I don't expect to be this tired. I'm doing my best, guys. I promise. We do go in up at uh, the sea shots are being uh, killed into real quick. Um, big, big, big move. Doc in a bunch of trouble up top. Juggle will try and get this. There is the leap and goodbye. I never noticed how much I think Hogger's um I got killed noise may be taken from the like um Deadwind peasants. My beloved is gone, but his power remains. Control the shrines and make use of it. Big, big, big! Orphan comes in, catches two people inside the uh, jaws. Great job from the Kerrigan. I want to say life to all that. It doesn't look like they'll actually get anyone inside the PRA, but Kerrigan was like a marked woman. Kerrigan was like her, her minutes were written on the wall, and she managed to delay and then delay and then delay and then get wrapped, and then her team showed up and saved her little life. I don't know why, for some reason I want that to be Dancing Bean. Slain. 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 Okay, but they will- the first fort of the game does go down against PRA here, um, what is it? 12 minutes into the game. A lot of back and forth, but not a lot of like lasting damage. We've had a total of uh, 13 kills in the game so far. That was for a pretty easy map. I can do that. Space Pope goes in, goes in once again. We do get stunned out by the Orphea. Oh, if the Sona was in the area, this is such a good leap. However, Malfurion gets picked out. Gib goes ahead and says, I've been level 13, I have a longer fishing hook, and you have a death sentence. Normally, you Malfil for death sentences, but I'm pretty sure that one counts. Oh, wow. A little bit of extra fanfare going on. Are you going to be on the dragon? Are we on the dragon? Let's go. Do. I literally had no choice. Literally. Blue team has destroyed a fort. Double fort going down to CCS. Dragon Knight is moving towards the bottom of the map. There is nothing else to attack the bottom of the map unless they go for core. And they should not go for core right now. Goes ahead and gets it. Space Pope goes ahead and gets just absolutely crushinated. Crushinator isn't even casting this match, but you know what? His presence is felt.
All right, we dropped a couple more frames. Sorry about that. We're back now. Double. I love this coming through. Uh, Leap kind of ends up getting used. Dancing Bacon goes ahead and takes a bunch of damage. Will actually get out of there, but not so much will Hogger. Of course, they're not actually defending here. Though this wave is very pushed. Four is in peril, I agree. So there goes the new Barak. He's a bunch of damage. You have to keep moving back and forth and forth and back. And there is the GG. It does look like game number two and the series will be won in a reverse sweep by creepy crawly spiders. Let me go and see if I can get a brief interview. Like I said, I'm really tired. I'm going to try and get in bed very, very quickly. It's so weird. This, this stupid job has me going to bed at a decent hour. What is this? I don't like it. One second. All right, so while we wait to see if I am joined by anyone, let's go ahead and go over some of these, uh, these statistics that have come out. We do go ahead and have... In terms of damage, Dancing Bacon does lead the way. Not super surprising. Um, was doing very, very, very good work. Oh, it looks like we've already got Harkin with us. So, hello, hello. Hi, friendo. How are you? You are ready to come? Uh, yes, I was, apparently. <laughs> so, first of all, I will have to unfortunately keep this a little brief because I'm super tired. It is 12.24 and I work tomorrow morning. Oh, that's fun. But, uh, first of all, kind of give me a question. How are you feeling right now? I mean, I'm a little tired. I worked some long days, but yeah, that was a really good matchup. It absolutely was. Very, very back and forth series. Um, did you guys make any specific changes after? Like after the first match? Yeah, like at, at, after the first match, is there anything you did differently? Was there like an evolution in the way you tried to draft? Because the uh, games two and three really felt much more control on your part. CC into our comps because I think we were kind of lacking a little bit of that in game one. Um, the comp felt really good, but, uh, but we just didn't play it and utilize it to its full potential. So we kind of you know, thought, hey, like this is something we've had experience with, and so we'll just uh, we'll go back to basics. Well, it definitely seemed to shine through on games two and three. Um, though the they also, they took you to Volskaya at first, and then a little bit more is, and feel free not to answer this, but how much, because obviously it's very difficult to keep up to practice on Volskaya, considering it's not in the Storm League rotation anymore. Um, how comfortable are you on Volskaya? Like, was it a map thing, or do you not really know? I mean, I, I am comfortable on Volskaya. I've played it lots of times over the years like i know the rotations i hate volskaya i find it to be the most boring map in the in the pool but that's just me personally um i don't want to speak for the other guys so certainly certainly fair makes sense so um ba -ba -ba. going on to infernal shrines infernal shrines like you guys had a very very good control of the map um i'm trying to remember anything specific about that game to actually ask you about I guess in general, um, they ended up banning out the Orphea more or less for you. Um, although I guess you brought it in in game number three, but I was a bit surprised because, like, after their performance on game number one, I really expected you to ban the Orphea. 
were you planning on taking it or was that a like does that not part of your battle plan no actually that was something we were looking at definitely for game two um Cordona is really strong on the Orphea, and it gave us a lot of success against um, Community Pizza there a couple of weeks ago, which is something that I think uh, was kind of looked at, and maybe that was part of their decision making was that uh, they wanted to get rid of the Orphea for us because they figured that we might pick it up. It's probably the same kind of thing that led them down to um, banning out the Kerrigan on Infernal Shrines because I mean I've been known to play Kerrigan on Infernal Shrines, and it's just Banning out those comfort picks, I think, um, which is really smart gameplay by them. I mean, good strategizing and good uh, scouting on their part. So, You probably can't answer for this, but I do have to ask, in game number one, and I guess also three, there, was, there were times that, um, specifically there was one point where Stitches went for a hook and caught dance and caught... Uh, Dancing Bacon, but was not actually able to land. Like, they got caught on a wall or something. How agonizing is it for someone like Stitches to not be able to eat bacon? <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, it's agonizing for anybody to eat bacon, but Stitches, I mean, he's got that big belly, right? So you gotta figure, he's gotta love his bacon. Absolutely. I feel like that must have just like ruined his whole night. Whatever the because he actually caught the hook and then she got stuck on the, like the ruins of a building. Right. And ah. I mean that's like that's like watching your bacon get stuck on the frying pan. That's just awful. <laughs> Moving on to game number three on to the uh Darkenshire. So obviously I like that one's the very, very um big rotations back and forth. Um you went up once but for the most part it really kind of felt like you were just like okay top lane does top lane things and we're just going to you seem to really really aggressive at getting the camps um yeah for the most part um like jack was really comfortable he was doing his thing in solo um i just kind of offered since i was in mid lane at once to say like hey like why don't i just come up and get the hogger like we can get that gank quick i think since uh docket was really far pushed out and Hortopult was down and it just seemed to make sense and it was like yeah let's do this and then that resulted in a good kill on Hogger and um, just gave us that little bit of an advantage so but yeah as far as the camps go I mean they're so important to to that map especially bot lane like that you get that super push going with one or two siege camps and then that bottom camp where you have the spell armor and all that uh, potential to just siege through bottom for win condition and it's just it so it your camp timing is just so important on that map. Absolutely. So um last question I always ask everyone. Can you tell me where the name creepy crawling spiders comes from? Uh well, I believe it is a CCS um thing. It fits the uh the mold of obviously CCS and then the uh I can't remember which one of the guys it was that actually just decided that they liked the name Creepy Crawly Spiders. But uh, but we've all started taking spiders on for our... Uh, what type of spider we'd be for the Creepy Crawly Spiders. <laughs> I, I wanted to be the jumping spider, the little one that wears the raindrop as the hat, because they're adorable. Aww. Right? Pictures of them where they're ra wearing little raindrops, it's so cute. <laughs> I, I guarantee you there are people in chat right now that are like there's no such thing as a cute spider and they are wrong but they exist they, exactly there are adorable spiders alright so those are all the questions I had for me let me go and turn it over to you for any shout outs you might want to give uh, I want to shout out um, PRA that was a really great set uh, you guys really have done a lot of work and it's very obvious um guys great team i want to shout out my teammates uh gib was doing an excellent job on tank tonight auxilium just amazing heels i love her heels jack is king of the solo lane cordona is amazing on all his dps um i'd love to shout out valk's mom here wonderful lady obviously look at her son and then, as you uh, said that, I was going to correct you if you didn't. <laughs> and then I'd love to shout out the whole CCS organization, our casters, and all of NGS 
for putting this all on and you guys for doing everything you do. And thank you very much for casting the game, Raka. Uh, and Arrested does point out that based on what you said, uh, if you take over the team, are you changing it to cute, cuddly spiders? I would totally do that. I'm a cute, cuddly spider. <laughs> So those are the questions I had. I will go and let you enjoy the after party, and I will run to bed. Gracias, and I hope you have a really good sleep. I hope so, too, because i got to be up early. But regardless, wow. I will see you in the next one, and be awesome. Best, best of luck to you in the morning, and thank you very much, Raka. My pleasure. Cheers. I pressed raid too early. So we are going to go ahead and move over to uh, Rockwell. She's not my Year's the Storm, but she is here as the Storm like player and streamer. So we're still going to go and be nice to her. And I'm going to go to bed almost immediately, so I won't hang out with you. But let's go say hi. Spooky Mansion.